I do need to tell you something. Tell me something? Yeah. What's that? Come back here and look. You know, to be two country bumpkin rednecks, that's pretty darn straight right there now. Well, Cog Squad, fall, I feel like fall is in the air. Really do. Uh, the, the wind has really, really picked up over the last week or so. Temperatures are amazing. Now, yesterday it did, and day for yesterday it did get into the 90s. Or low 90, like 89, 90-ish. But it's been feeling amazing. Which means we will be planting the fall garden pretty soon. I'm hoping next week we're going to get some of these plants in the ground. Which also means that it's time to start planting a lot of stuff. This is the time, at least for us, here in Zone 8 in Central Alabama. This is the time when we really want to start focusing on planting uh, things... For the future say for example trees and shrubs this is that time for us like fruit trees now is a great time any type of shrubbery or anything like that now is the great time because they're not going to be in so much stress because of the heat also it's fixed to become our wet season or our rainy season so we don't have to water that much that being said we're like on a mini drought right now this is either week five ish maybe maybe longer than that we haven't had a single drop of rain and i just looked at the 10 day forecast and zero percent chance of rain we are going to start on our potager garden on the side yard first we're going to start there and then we're going to work our way around to the back where the potager garden is going to go on into the back and where the kitchen garden is going to be and the first step that we want to do that we talked about here on our side yard was is to number one build like a little courtyard area with three sod squares in the middle gravel around it and on the edge leading into the fruit orchard we're going to do a rose swag we went over to petals from the past talked to jason over there the owner from petals from the past our favorite nursery and he gave me some tips on what roses we ought to plant on the swag and show you guys what their swag looks like all right, first of all, I do want to show you guys this. You remember our side yard, how we said we're going to have two or three side squares with the gravel around it? This is very similar right here. That we're very similar. This is exactly what ours is more likely going to look like. Just like this right here. And then, of course, they got the, uh, they got the metal edging right there. It's a little metal edging, and it keeps the rocks and the grass in place right here. There. but this right here is how we're gonna do our side yard like this and spring is over so there's no roses on here but I want to show y'all the rose swag and this is it I say no roses there are a few roses but you can see the poles and there's a metal cable that comes down you can see it's got a rose that grows up it and so in the spring this rose will just cover this whole entire swag you can see it starts right here it goes up and over up and over up and over and it is absolutely gorgeous when it is in full bloom and um doing its thing gorgeous all right so we need to figure out the height what height they got Ten foot. Ten foot. Ten foot. Well, I should have said it because that's what I thought it was. I thought it was ten foot as well. I'm thinking ten foot wide too. No, I think it's further. But it may be deceiving. Yeah, I think it's twelve. Fourteen. Fourteen foot apart. Yep. All right. Ten foot tall, fourteen foot apart. That's right. All right, the rose swag. Yep. Yeah. All right, I went over there and measured. We yes. got 10 foot poles. Okay. And then I measured 14 foot width in, in between, between them. them is what I measured. That's good. The rose that came to my mind first was American Pillar. Yeah. 
But will Peggy Martin grow on the swag or is it oh, too yeah. big? No, no, Peggy Martin will grow on the swag too. And you remember with American Pillar, you're gonna get a spring show uh, that's phenomenal. Right. With Peggy Martin, you get a spring show that's phenomenal and you get some scattered blooms, some summer and some fall. Well, you never get that much right. summer, fall, but it's you know, a repeat it's, rebloomer, but it's not a heavy repeat yeah, Exactly. Okay. Spring is always the best. What season. roses do you have on your swag? We used, I used some repeat bloomers and some spring uh, bloomers. I used okay. American Pillar, uh -huh. like you and I were talking about. Uh -huh. I used Red Cascade uh -huh. for a repeat bloomer. Uh -huh. I did go out there with uh, Jean Desprez, this, this, uh, this, uh, um, um, Noisette, this okay. Noisette here. And then I've got Clotilde Super. Uh -huh. That's one of the other repeat blooming polyanthus. And then I did go ahead and went in with Peggy Martin, you know, oh, so cool. so that I okay. could get to the top. A lot of the repeat bloomers, they're a little bit slower out of the gate, right. whereas my spring bloomers, I mean, they're, go. They're, they go to the top and now we're going down the wires. Okay. So when I'm looking for growth, if I want to get, get really, get the structure covered, the spring bloomers, you just cannot, uh, you can't beat them. They're, they're just, when they're not blooming, they're growing. And whereas sense. the repeat bloomers, we're going to get a flush of, and energy goes into bloom okay. and then a flush of growth, flush of bloom, flush of growth. Gotcha. So that gives me something to think about the end. Mm -hmm. That gives me something to think about. Yeah, I'm an impatient gardener. So I like going with those spring bloomers. Uh, yeah, that's what I'm thinking too. Well, you <laughs> want to see it. You know, you're going to put this beautiful structure in and you want to see it covered up with roses. Especially the swag. Mm -hmm. the, yeah. The swag especially. Yeah. And I've gone back in and I pulled out a couple of repeat bloomers that I had originally put there because uh -huh. they were just taking forever. So I popped the spring bloom in and boom, it's a done deal. So, okay. So I'm and, and, that, and, and I'm using so. ramblers. You remember, yeah. you know, yeah, yeah. I know about the rambler. About yep. The rambler because that growth habit just lays on the ground, and when you grab it, you can really wrap it. Yeah. Whereas those climbers are shooting those fishing pole canes out, and they're a little bit tougher to got you to to get it bend them in there, and make them do what you want them to do. Okay. Awesome. Um, All right, so now we're fixing to get started on our rose swag. Now we're doing it just a little bit different because there's no wrong way or right way to do this. Uh, the really main difference between ours is we're using square posts because they're just easy, easier for us to find than the round ones that petals from the past had. And we're also gonna use our post protectors. Uh, we had uh, a couple left over from the house build, so we went and bought some more and that should help the post from rotting from the bottom and then my plan is to after I get the swag built is I'm thinking about painting the top just that top square because that's where it also can rot because rain will sit on the top of those posts and then rot it from the inside starting from the top all the way down so I'm thinking about painting that top and then putting a topper on it this is what we're doing with ours to give you guys an idea if somebody wants to do this or replicate it or do a small one or even do a large one we're doing poles that are 10 foot out of the ground so it's going to be 10 foot high give or take it don't have to be exact uh it's going to look beautiful once the roses get on it uh so it doesn't have to be exactly 10 foot but basically idea 10 foot out of the ground and we're spacing ours roughly uh we were going to do 15 foot apart but our span that we measured out 14 foot ended up being hitting dead on exactly where we wanted it so we're going 14 foot apart and then we're just going to take a metal wire and we're going to start at the top and we're going to swag it down and come up swag it down come up all the way now i'm not for sure exactly how far i'm going to let the sag the uh, swag uh droop uh i'll just we'll just eyeball that and see what we think looks good but Let's get started, let's set some posts, let's get this cable put on, uh, and then, and then, let's go pick out our roses and see what rose we wanna go with and get those things planted in the ground. I, lo I love doing stuff like this. Gardening is probably my biggest passion and has been for years, for years. There would not be a Cock Hill Farm if it wasn't for gardening it's just i've just fell in love with it in my mid-20s and for 20 plus years now um i just love it i absolutely love it in all types of gardening i know a lot of people think of gardening they think of vegetables and row crops and, and raised bed gardens but when i think of gardens i think of everything 
the fruit orchard, roses, herbs, the uh, vegetable gardens, the flower gardens. Um, I, it just, it just all. I'm super passionate about all of it, and so I get really excited when it comes to anything that has to do with gardening. I heck, I get excited when I go over to Petals, <laughs> and I've been there a hundred times, and um, I just, I just get excited about it. All of it, starting seeds, all of it. I just sometimes it's hard for me to keep my composure. I mean, I just really, really love it and enjoy it so much. Enough talking, Jason. Let's get busy. I had a dream that you were mine. You lit the flame right over the line. I do need to tell you something. Tell me something? Yeah. What's that? Come back here and look. You know, to be two country bumpkin rednecks, that's pretty darn straight right there now. Well, string don't lie. And, uh, well, we've done strings before. <laughs> but that's pretty straight. But it wasn't a string that lied, it was us. Yeah. That's, uh, there's gonna be no Budweiser swag. And ain't gonna be no crooked swag. It's pretty straight. Let's get this cable up. We got the swag installed. Our next thing will be is we got to plant the roses. Well, as you guys know, this ground is just really, really hard, mainly because the type of dirt it is. Plus, Greg ran his roller over it to pack it down for the house like every so often. So there's no telling how many times this thing's been ran over, not only with a bulldozer, but with a thing that actually packs the dirt. So it's hard as concrete. It is hard as concrete. So we're gonna use the auger right here to dig our holes for the roses. And then we're gonna add a bunch of compost, add it to the hole, and then plant the roses in it. Now roses are not gonna get super deep, but I'm gonna give it enough where it can drain, which the soil drains well anyways. Roses do not like wet feet, period. They like to have well, well drained soil. So that's what we're gonna give them. All right, on to the next one. When I walk up, when I walk up, you were just a trace in my blood. So from a crack in the sea, just electricity. When I walk up, when I walk up, you were just a trace in my blood. I'm gonna answer some questions on the post protectors because I know it's gonna come up. One, are these poles not in the ground as deep as these poles because you see that much post protector? Now, the taller ones were some of the ones we had left over and they were for the barnuminium and those poles are driven really, really deep. These poles are about three foot deep and that's why you see this much left hanging out of here. So we got these poles three foot deep in the ground versus the uh, poles in the barnuminium are like four, five foot deep. So that's why it looks like that. Also, what about water? Well, the, these things have wheat poles in them. So any water gets in there should just drain on out. So it's just an experiment. We're gonna see how it works, but I think it's gonna work good. All right, so now we got our holes dug. We got our compost. We got us some mulch that we're gonna add to the holes too. I got some lime because our soil is super acidic. Don't add lime to your soil unless you know. So just be sure you do a soil test. I know what mine is and I know I need a little bit of lime. Now we're fixing to plant our roses and the roses we went with, American Pillar. It is a springtime bloomer. It's extremely fast. It's gonna put on an amazing show come spring. It's absolutely gorgeous. One of my favorites right here. I love this rose. We actually pretty sure we had this rose at Little Cog. It was the beautiful one that we had grown on the fence in front of our house. Gorgeous. This thing will put on an absolute spectacular, unbelievable show in the spring for about six weeks. And it's gonna be gorgeous. It's gonna be like fireworks in March. It's exactly what it's gonna All be right. like. 
I had a dream that you were mine. You lit the flame right over the line. On my darkest day. Brooke is going to get us some mulch from my mulch pile. We're just going to mulch this whole area. That will help with the weeds. It's going to look way better. And it's going to condition our soil because this weed mat is woven. So anything can leach down in it. And eventually over time, that weed mat will break down. So the mulch is going to condition our soil over time. And then several years from now, this soil hopefully will be way better than it is now. It is in. The rose swag is in still. I'm going to cut those post protectors off. Yes. And then I'm going to um put post protectors on the top. Yeah, we're going to put we're going to put a uh, little toppers on the top to keep the uh, wood from rotting. And then I'm probably going to put some drip in. But uh phase 1 is done and we're going to start training it up the um the poles. The poles. Yep, and I'll, I'll show you guys how we're going to do that when we get to that point. For the most part, there's only like one or two that I can start training, but the rest of them aren't quite tall enough yet, but they will be. Hey, this was a big project. This was a big project. I'm whooped. This is a big project right here. Now, we're all going to come back. We're going to put a metal border in right through here, and then this will be pea gravel, and then that'll separate the two. And then, of course, down here is going to be pine straw and maybe right. Asia as jasmine that's what we're leaning towards so we'll see how that goes so hopefully I don't think it'll be this spring it's probably gonna be next spring that uh it's gonna be beautiful it's gonna have to wait probably a year it's all right we didn't get started we'd be waiting two years that's right that is right so this was like our starting point this is our starting point our next phase is we need some topsoil and then once we get the topsoil dumped on this back side over here, that'll give us something to put our sod on. And then we can start making the little courtyard area right here. Or that gravel and our sod in the middle. That's right. That'll be next. Whew. I'm tired. I brought you some water. Good, thank you. <laughs> She's eating scratch this morning. Room beds? Yep. She left the baby? They should have followed her, I reckon. Given a chance, right? Yeah. Well, they decided to stay with babysitter Peaches. I'm going to try to sneak a bite. I don't know if that was a good choice. Let's see what happens. Peaches bite letter. It's gonna be fast. She's not gonna spill any. Nope, you should have went with your mama. Oh, there goes a little bit. See it? Yeah, I got him a little bit. <laughs> Goodness gracious. Crazy. Good morning, loves. Hey, Mildred, Tipper. What's going on, y'all? 